It's quite common to use address information in your Power App or in your Power Automate flow. Things like taking your latitude and longitude, turning that into a genuine real address and using it in your app. And until recently that was super easy using what's called the Bing Maps connector through Power Automate or Power Apps. But in 2024, Microsoft removed that option for us. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can reinstate those capabilities. Unfortunately, it does come with some trade-offs, but I'll talk you through those and we'll explore some options. So I've got a pretty common example here that I'm showing on screen of a Power App that does a thing. This is a clock in, clock out from one of our challenges that you could build if you wanted to. And here we've got some information about where I'm currently located. This information is gleaned for me from what's called the Bing Maps connector. So that connector exists over here in the data group. And you'll see here we've got a Bing Maps connection. Now, once you add that into your Power App or you have a connector which you use in your Power Automate flow, what you can then do is, for example, go to your on start and you can use that Bing Maps connector to get name information using what's called the longitude and latitude. I use it in this way. Because I've declared it as a data connection that I've got, I can simply use the name of that data connection and you'll see that if I if I enumerate down into that connection, there's a number of different actions that I can perform using that connection. And you'll see them here. And the one that we use in our step up challenge is the get location by point. And you'll see it implemented here where we say get location by point and we pass in um, a piece of information off the device or off the PC called latitude. And we also pass in longitude. So let's assume, because it's true, that Microsoft are going to remove this capability of Bing Maps from us uh, within the next few years. It's actually 2028 is the advertised date, but over time it's going to be removed and will be disappearing. So maybe you don't even want to use Bing Maps, you want to use another third party service. Even if you're using the Azure Maps option, which is what Microsoft's documentation guides you towards, there is only one way that you can connect to its API and consume its services. And it's the same for all third party mapping applications now. The only way to do it is to use what's called a custom connector. Now you can set a custom connector up and you can use it in both Power Apps and you can use it in Power Automate, but I'm going to show you the experience of setting up a custom connection to another free third-party mapping service using the Power Apps interface so you can see what's involved. Now I've done a little bit of research around different options and of course there are Google as an option and lots of others. When you do a bit of searching this particular one comes up because it's absolutely free, it's open source and it's a great way to experiment with APIs and get used to how they work without incurring cost and without needing an account even to implement the use of their API. Now it isn't the best solution, it isn't the perfect solution, but it's a good solution if you want to experiment, get used to using APIs, and also just get that Power App working again if Bing Maps is disappearing for you. So it's called Nominatim. Um, I'm not a promoter for it, I just found it. It's one of those ones that I like the look of because, like I said, it's free. However, it's also pretty straightforward in its developer documentation. So this page here is nominatim.org, release docs, latest, and it's the reverse lookup API. I want to give longitude and latitude and get the information back. I'm going to send just those two pieces because we're already familiar with how that's supposed to work. So I'm going to do a video on how to translate all of this lovely documentation into meaningful steps that you can implement into Power Apps, but I've already done that piece of work. So right now I'll just show you how this works. So what you're looking for, first of all, in your Power Apps or even your Power Automate home screen is down the left hand side, you're looking for custom connectors. If you don't see that, click more and you'll see a few options here. If you click discover all, and scroll down. This interface is changing a lot recently, but you'll generally find the two together under data and you're looking for connections and custom connectors. You can see here I've pinned mine, which is why it's there. The reason it's custom is because it's not one of those out of the box connectors that I can just use. So you have to create it. And the way you create it is you click on custom connectors and you click new custom connector. And for me, the quickest way to start this one off was from blank. There are a few other options here, but we won't do those in this video. You'll notice I've got one that I baked early, but I'll show you exactly how I created that. So first of all, we'll give it a name. I'll give this V2, maybe put a map connector. The first screen you have, you've got some styling options. Really, they're just styling options. There's no need to put too much into there, but we want to use a secure HTTPS um, connection. 
And this is where a lot of people get lost. And this is why I've done that other video because I want to take developer documentation and then have a very, very closely knitted guide to show you how to translate developer information for any custom connectors that you want to build. But I know through some experimentation that what you want to put in here is the following. You want to put nominatim.openstreammap.org. We can leave the base URL as it is. There's no authentication needed for this one because it's a completely free and open to use um, API. And then we get into the challenging bit. And this is where I often struggle a little bit unless I'm using it day in, day out. You forget what to put where. So I'll take some of that pain away for you and just show you that the first piece you want to create is an action. This is what your Power App is going to use. I don't know if you remember in that Bing Maps connector, it was there was Bing Maps dot and then it did something. You had a list of options that you could choose. This is where you create those options. So we're going to call it reverse geocoding. I'm going to pop into here that it returns an address using longitude and latitude. And then we give it a very specific name for the action that we want. So I'm going to call it reverse geocode. Note the no spaces because this is going to get used when we look it up and use it in our Power App. So this next portion is where we make the request to the API. And this is where I often get stuck. And this is where in my other video, I'll show you how to generate some really great shortcuts to creating this. The documentation will tell you how to structure your request. I'm going to click import from sample. I know it's a get request. So the URL that you want to place in, I'm going to actually provide that to you in the comments of this video just to make your life easy. And if you want to know how I got there, go watch my other AI video about using AI to help with API documentation in the Power Platform. So paste that in exactly as you see it there, forward slash reverse, and then we've got some parameters. What that's doing is it's telling Power Automate that we're going to give some information to this API. It's going to be a latitude, a longitude, and the format is going to be JSON. That's all you need to do there. What you should then see is this format here. So what it's doing is it's saying, okay, I expect the following pieces of information to be passed when you invoke that URL. That's all you need to do there. Down in the response, you'll see that there's a few um, items already clicked for you. There's a default, if you open it up, that's what you'll see. Now, this is describing the information that we expect to come back from that endpoint. And again, using developer documentation, you can get the structure, you can generate it. Using the video that I'm going to share with you, that I've put in the comments, you can get AI to do that for you. So what you're then going to do is click import from sample, and you're going to paste in, again, the piece of information that I've put in the comments of this video. And it's going to look like that. That's a, what's called a sample payload. That's an example of what I expect to get back from the API. And it's even got some data in it. So if I click import, you will see what's happened is it's understood it and it's interpreted what it expects to get back. Now, this is all data that I can use in my Power Platform, either my app or my Power Automate flow. So you'll notice there below, it says validation succeeded. So it's done a little bit of work behind the scenes. What we're now going to go and do is we're going to go and skip these two steps. And you can do that by either clicking the right arrow down there or just literally clicking on to test. And we're going to go and test it. So to test it, create the connector. What that's going to do is create a sample instance of this connector that we can use. It'll take a little while, but eventually you will get to this screen here. Now, what you then want to do is click new connection. So effectively use the parameters that you've just set up to create me a real instance of a connection and click create. So you'll get this happening. Um, I've now been flicked across to this location here, which is my connections because it's created a connection for me. It's got my V2, so that is the correct one. So I've got to go back now to my custom connector and I've got to go and just validate. It's a bit of a weird flow, but you do kind of get the, get the hang of it in the end. So let's just quickly edit that connector, that custom connector, pop across to test. We'll now see that that connector was created. I'm going to use that one and I'm now going to put some data into it. And this is just going to validate that it can connect to the endpoint with the information I've given it and give me some data back. So for test data, Again, all this will be in the comments. Just pop in these values. There's nothing scary about these values. These are just London locations. Test operation. And what it's done is it's gone off 
this status code indicates it's got a successful response back from the API and it's given me a bunch of data. So now what I know is that if I can close that, this connector here is now usable for me across my power platform solutions. So let's go back to that app that we were messing with earlier and we're going to implement this custom connector. Now the way we do that is we add data and we go and type in the name of that custom connector. And we can see it here, nominating map connector, really bad spelling there, forgive me. But you'll notice the little diamond premium. That means it's going to cost me if I want to use this in a real solution. So I'm going to add it because it's fine. I can cope with that right now for testing. The data source has been added to your app. Okay, so then what we do is we just go back into the location where we use that particular um, connector earlier, which was in the on start, and we start changing this information. I'll just delete that for now, and we type the name of the connector. And there it is. So nominate him connector v2, enumerate reverse geocode. And if I pop that in there, I should start to see the information that I need. Now, because this is expecting JSON, you've got to use a slightly different approach to the way that you um, implement your, your call. So you, I don't know if you noticed there, but I use the curly bracket. And then it's giving me options that I can pass into this connector. So let's put lat and let's use that location latitude we used before. We had a comma. And again, same principle, longitude. You can see there what it's expecting, lat, long, and format. And finally, format, just type the word JSON. In fact, put that in quotes. Do we need to do anything else? We do at the end. So if we enumerate now, it already understands what information I can get back. So I want kind of, let's just use address. Let's just try that, uh, dot value. Okay, this is nice. So we could enumerate into the address object, but what I'll do is just for the sake of speed, I will use display name. I can see there I forgot to close those curly brackets. And there we go. So now if I run this, it's gonna take the location, the latitude, longitude, and it should, if this works, populate that data. So there you go. So they have warned through their own documentation this particular connector it's not perfect it's an imprecise location so experiment with the data you get back using that technique of enumeration through the different objects and see what you're happy with but it's just an example of how you can go out to a third party connector and get mapping information using a custom connector that you've just set up so I hope you can see it's not that hard for us to respond to this change that Microsoft are making to the mapping service. But what I've shown you there is that you're going to have to get to grips with what's called custom connectors and specifically HTTP connections to other services to help you get the best out of the Power Apps experience or the Power Automate experience. So as we wrap up, don't forget to hit subscribe because that will give you a notification for the next video I'm going to share with you, which will show you how to use AI to bridge the gap between some of the developer documentation that comes along with these APIs you may want to use to enhance your Power Automate flow or your Power App and the forms and the screens we see in Power Apps and Power Automate to create these connections. The two don't always naturally go together, so I'm going to use AI as a translator and you can come and see in that video how I get on.